president of the Park Advisory Council since about the mid-90s. Uh, it seems that nobody wants the job but me. <laughs> but uh, I am getting old. Uh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> uh, and over the course of time, I founded se a couple, several other organizations. The, the one that uh, that has been around the latest is the Washington Park Residents Advocacy Council. And we've been meeting up until the pandemic for a good four years. After the pandemic, not so much. And we definitely will be affected by the Obama Center. And when you look at the adjoining communities, Grand Boulevard, Woodlawn, Inglewood, they all are in the process of redevelopment. Inglewood has a heck of a shopping center on 63rd Halston and increasing as it goes. Now, of course, we can't do any of this without our elected officials. Uh, about two or three weeks ago, I heard on the radio about what our state legislators, our black caucus was doing. And it sounded like they were doing work like never before. And that's why it was so important. And of course, we couldn't have a planning discussion without an elected officials. But one in particular happens to live in Washington Park. And of course, that's Senator Matt Hunt. So all of us have a district office or offices. So um, my district office is at 2929 South Wabash Avenue. I put it down there because it's in the middle of my district. My district goes all the way to Chicago Avenue. Okay. I got Michigan Avenue, Chicago Avenue, Star River North, near North, near South, parts of uh, Washington Park live there. We must live in our districts. Parts of South Shore, about 75% um, of Inglewood is in the district. Back of the yards, so China, parts of Chinatown, so very diverse district. Okay, so a lot of folks say we've never seen you. You don't do nothing, y'all don't do nothing. That we, we're busy doing a ton of things. Each senator represents uh, two hundred twenty thousand constituents, and each senator has two state reps. So Lamont Robinson is the state rep in this area. He has half of my district. And then the other half is in my other state rep, Sonia Harper. I don't know if y'all have heard of her, but she resides over in, Eagle, in the Inglewood area. She has the other part of the district. So they have their district, and I have, and, and, and uh, I have, but I have all of their district. So I have 220, they got 120,000 people each. So that makes up the district, right? So I have it all. So now people, if there's some issues dealing with the community and they're related to Springfield, we fund education, we fund hospitals, you know, we, we control the Medicaid money, the, the WIC program, the food stamps, uh, the prisons, um, uh, by mm -hmm. constitution. We must fund, the majority of the budget goes towards education and the criminal justice system and Medicaid. We fund the state police, okay? We fund uh, the highways, the Illinois Department of Transportation. All of the projects on the highways, Interstate 55, 57, we fund all of those projects, okay? We get, we tend to get dollars from the federal government and we use your tax dollars to pay for all of this stuff. Okay, that's everything that, that, that I'm talking about. We fund health and human services, the amount of profit programs, the, the alcohol, the drugs, the mental health services that are provided in the communities. We provide those services as well. Okay, we, uh, we regulate the restaurant association. We regulate the medical association. We regulate uh, the businesses downtown. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff. 
It's a lot of stuff y'all have been doing, you know. But a lot of now going through this, I'm taking the time to go through this because I know that many of y'all do not know that, you know. And so some people get us mixed up because with the city of Chicago, what they do. So a lot of folks call me and say, hey Maddie, um, I need my garbage picked up or something. So what I'll do is just say, rather than say, well, we don't do that, I say, okay, well, do you know who the alderman is, this alderman takers? And we don't call them. Call them. Say, oh, um, yeah. You know, follow up, and then she'll call her. She and her office, they'll call me and say, hey, man, um, we got a call from a constituent that needs this and that and that and that. And they know that it's a state project. Um, sometimes they have federal issues. You have issues with your Social Security. If you are a vet, um, what else? Federal government. Mostly those, uh, the veterans, social security, one other major issue that most, most of our constituents have issues with. You can call my office, but what I'm going to do is refer you to our congressman, whoever our, our congressman is. So Danny Davis has part of this area, Bobby Rush has the other. So we will refer it, calls or the issues to them. Sometimes if I think that it's a bigger problem, I may pick up the phone and call Tammy Duckworth, who you know, each state has two U.S. Senators. Mm -hmm. So I may call Tammy Duckworth's office, or I may call Durbin, Senator Dick Durbin's office, because they are, they are our two Senators, U.S. Senators in Washington, right? And then, and I, and then I don't know if you all know this or not, but every uh, Congressman and Senator, members of Congress, they have a person on their staff dedicated to work on social security issues. Just one person does that. Okay. If you can't ask, if you can't get the number to social security, they won't answer the phone to social security. If, if, if there's something wrong with your Medicare, for seniors, Medicare. Okay. That's a federal issue. So our federal elected officials handle that. Okay. Uh, some folks are vets. They have problems with their benefits. Or maybe they aren't getting any benefits. Or maybe they have some issues with the vet, with the hospital or something. You know? I mean, so you call them. But if you don't know how to reach them, you call an office and we'll make that referral to you. To them. Right? So there's some, and then you know, we got the county government. Tony Craig we got Cook County Commissioners. We got the Water Reclamation District, that's a part of the county. You know, they, they handle the, the, the water infiltration plant that's, um, based over there, um, down there by Navy Pier, you see. The Forest Preserve, that's a part of the Cook County system. You know, you know. So I mean, so there are various forms of government, local, state and local government, that is really important to understand the differences, the roles and the responsibilities of these. I'm not gonna take up all different forms of government. You know, if you, if you if you think that, that we need to pass a bill to focus on some kind of particular issue that you think is a problem that we, you think we need to fix, then you call us. You call us. We pass bills, the city passes statutes. Okay. I remember quickly that I was uh, downtown having dinner one night, and one lady saw, she saw me and she said, hey, I'm just sending a number. I said, yeah. And then she sat right down with me. <laughs> so they moved my stuff on out of the way. And she told me about this problem and everything. I said, yeah, I am sort of kind of familiar with that statue. And because we have thousands of statues on the books. And so I said, um, and I didn't have any paper. Normally I carry paper. I have pen, but I have no paper in my book. I just have my purse. I mean, I don't need paper or any notebooks or nothing. And so, I just took a nap on the table, and I told the lady, I said, if you write down here, write light so you don't tear the paper, tear the paper. Write down the issue, put down your name, your address, and your email, and, and I, that was on Saturday night. So I said, when I go down to Springfield Monday, I'll pass it on the staff, and uh, we'll see what we can do about it. So I did just that, and my staff says, oh yeah, 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 somebody else called about this. We haven't changed or amended this bill or this statute in 10 or 15 years, you know? So 
She and I both got the lady on the phone. The lady was shocked that we followed up. And next thing I know, my staff came back two days later with about 55 pages of information just from that little note that she had written. And we had the lady to come down to Springfield and she testified and supported the bill. I sponsored the bill, you know. And so there's a lot of ways y'all can make some change. So don't be out here in the community raising the bill and complaining to each other about they ain't doing this and they ain't doing that. Pick up the phone and call us. Just call us. Okay? Now some people say, well, I called my rep and I called my state senator and they didn't answer the phone. Okay, well call me and I know how to reach you. And we'll put contact you. Spread the word to your friends because it happens, you know. I mean, some some legislators and some people stay in the office all the time. I don't like to be in the office. I like to be out there in the community with the people. I know that housing is a major issue in this community. So I've been working on putting together an affordable housing piece for about five years. Okay, uh, you know, we have a different. We have a different uh, a group of legislators now down in Springfield because when I came down in 2003, we had white male Catholic, the majority legislators that made decisions for everybody in this state. They were old, they were racist, they, uh, was still operating from what was going on a hundred years ago. And anytime you start talking about anything minority or black or LGBTQ, they'll shut you down. They wouldn't even hear, hear, or hear the bill, the situation was nothing. They didn't want to hear nothing about it. So therefore, it was difficult to get anything through. I think when I came in, we had seven. Well, we had only three black legislators in the state when I came down. We have 11 senators, black senators now. We only had one uh, Latino legislator at the time. And when I came in, nothing came in with me, so that was two. And then the house only, they had a handful. So now they have about, we have about six Latinos or so. I mean, so, so, so as these people, remember I said I, I, I'm now number four out of 59? So as these people get old, they retire. But they get indicted, they go to jail. <laughs> okay? But the fact of the matter is that they're out of office. And so the people that remain there, when you all continue to thank God to keep electing me into office, and I appreciate you all very much for sending me back to Springfield. We keep going up the ladder the longer we stay. The more, the, the higher you get to the top, the more clout you, you have. And you can get more done for your community. So in terms of affordable housing, I've been going all over the state holding hearings on affordable housing. I can't just, uh, pass, I, I can pass a bill for, for um, my district, but it, when it comes to a general issue like affordable housing, that affects everyone statewide. So therefore, um, you know, I held hearings all over the state. And uh, plus, I think my Senate president at the time, Cullington, was just trying to get rid of me by sending me all over the state. You know, because I was raising so much money about not finding, not having enough money for affordable housing. And then there was an issue there with rent control. You know, and I was in the middle of that. You know, I take the lead on that, you know, for a while. He's an activist. So it's just been an issue for a long time, but I didn't give up. It was quite frustrating. But finally, Throughout the different transitions of legislators leaving and new ones coming in, this group that we got pretty now, they're, pretty, they're very progressive. A lot of those guys, some of them didn't have, uh, some of them had a high school education. Some of them, you know, uh, just stuck on one area. They come down to Springfield just for one area that they're interested in, you know. And we have a variety of backgrounds. You know, we got some legislators who are farmers, dentists, medical doctors, you know, horse traders. There's all kinds of backgrounds. So some of them, that's all they know. They don't know nothing about no inner city other than there's a lot of crime out there. Every time we turn around, y'all beg for more money. You know, those, that's the, because that's what they say to us. You know, y'all got too many issues in the city. But all of them like to come up here and dine and stay in the hotels and enjoy the bears and the 
tubs and <laughs> you know the, the theaters and everything you know so we say okay just bring the money come on and patronize us you know to jump out tax base here in Chicago but anyway in terms of affordable housing um, I got together with two of my colleagues one is from Arlington Heights her name is Senator Gillespie she uh, represents a, a pretty middle class upscale community but she's a, a lawyer and a former federal prosecutor. And she was saying, you know, I need to diversify my district. Even if, even if it causes me to get thrown out of office, we need to diversify our district and put some affordable housing units in our district, in my district. Sarah Feigenholz, she has Lincoln Park and now Old Town. And she and I got together with with uh, Gillespie. And so she said the same thing about, about the north side and, and uh, parts of the suburban area that she has. So the three of us for the past, every single day literally, for the past three years, we've been working on affordable housing. They've been working with me on affordable housing. And I was happy to bring them to the table with me because they had different ideals. You know, I, I was tunnel vision with me and my staff. So they had other different ideals on utilizing uh, tax credits to finance and give it to the developers to help them encourage them more into building affordable housing in, um, throughout the state of Illinois and to in continue to integrate the better parts of the state and the cities, you know, so that we won't continue to have um, um, uh, 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 black slums on the south and west sides. You just integrate it and put put affordable housing downtown, you just put it everywhere, Gold Coast, everywhere, you know, next door to the mayor, <laughs> something like that, you know. And so, um, and thank God for Biden, you know, with his, his uh, American Recovery Act. They put, they put so much money, y'all, in education and housing, we almost fell out. So what we're going to do, I sat down with my budget people and I took my bill and it, it was a, I was trying to find $30 million a year of tax credit dollars to fund public public housing, affordable housing rather, in my bill for four or five years. Okay? Three, six, nine, twelve. So I needed $150 million over five, spread out over a five year period. Well, under, I, couldn't get, I, I couldn't get enough. I couldn't find enough, 30, I couldn't find $30 million in, in one year. Because we have this, the Illinois Department of Housing Development Authority, I call it Ida for short. They have, they have all the affordable housing projects. So we have been funding that. And those projects still exist. We were just looking for the new to expand the sense of affordable housing is such a big, huge problem. So when we got the Recovery Act, they told us that there was a ton of money in there for affordable housing, but we had to wait until the federal government developed the guidelines to tell us, tell us all the different states how to spend monies in all of those different categories, you know? So like the last, gosh, it was like a miracle, like the last about seven days of session, the guidelines for housing finally came down. So we were able to take a hundred billion dollars. They gave me a hundred billion dollars a year, not for five years, but for three years. So I got three hundred million dollars, y'all, for affordable housing. This has never, ever happened ever in this in this in the history of the state of Illinois that much money. And we still might be able to get some more later on after we spend it. We're going to spend it. We are definitely going to spend it. So, you know, developers, if, if like in this package, if it talks about how much money we need, you know, y'all need to talk to, to meet with different folks. You need to go to Alderman for vacant lots. The Alderman is going to have some ideas on where she wants to put, build, build new housing. You can even take some of the money and renovate housing, you know, apartment buildings and stuff like that. You know, I got to find out. I think we can use it for 
private homes also. But guess what? It ain't no loan, y'all. It's a grant. <laughs> They're taking the lead on that. 
And that economic equity has a lot to do with it, but the main piece about it, economic equity is um, predatory lending and um, payday loans. <laughs> Did y'all know that the payday loans was charged 495% interest? Well, guess what we knocked it down to? About 30 or 35 percent. We, we did all of this. We finished all of this in, in, in May. And, the, and each one of those areas that I read off our bills that we passed, the government has already signed them into law. We have major press conferences about it. Uh, even me, we, I mean, we all spoke on it. And we just moved, moved the press conferences all over and the bill signings. All over the state of Illinois, we've done that. Those are done. Those are done deals. And he gave us over a, the Black Caucus over a billion dollars to implement them. To implement all of the reforms. Okay. Y'all, this is unheard of. So if you see any member, even the white folks who are le state legislators, I don't care if they're in the House or the Senate, you thank them. You see any of them, you just walk up to them and, and just thank them because. They stuck with us. Some of them was against us, but we were able to get enough votes to pass all of these pieces of legislation to get it done. But we can definitely bring resources back to the community. Now, the next step is implementing them. And some of them are going to take a shorter period of time, and some of them are going to be spread out probably over a five-year period. Especially some of those real detailed <coughs> issues. You know, and, and these issues that we selected, Folks have been making so much money off of our community that many of our many of our lives were, I'm gonna put it about it in the press, were, were literally threatened. Senator L. Z. Sim, we were in Springfield and he was leaving uh, one of the state office buildings about nine o'clock on night headed home. And a guy pulled a gun on him. He was sitting he had been following him and then he pulled up to his car and put a gun on him. And L. Z. got away from the guy and Got home. A police, a state trooper was not too far away. He stopped him, flagged him down, and gave him the description. He said, oh, I just saw that car and the guy. He circled the block, found the guy, and arrested him. Multi-millionaire guy, tons of money, heavy influence, down in Springfield, owns a technology company. You know, got a house full of guns. They didn't take any of them. Mm -hmm. He's one of the good old boy network from the good old boys, you know. Mm -hmm. And when he had court, <laughs> we we were supposed to be in a session at nine o'clock that morning. We didn't go in until eleven o'clock. The Senate president showed up, I showed up, the entire caucus showed up. Mm -hmm. the, the entire Democratic caucus showed up and in court. And we showed the judge that you're gonna deal with this. Mm -hmm. You are going to deal with this, you know. So we got all kind of phone calls and letters threatening and harassing us because by us reforming those areas, it's shifting the dollars away from certain communities into our communities mm -hmm. where they should have been at a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And see what they've been doing. I know all y'all been noticing how our communities have been looking poor, poor, and poor, but they've been taking the resources out. Taking the resources now, we never had the votes to change things down there. We got the votes, now. so that's why we're changing things now. So I'm going to you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm just curious if there are any grant programs in the pipeline to kind of work on education and help the community members actually have ownership within the community, not just what you're as far ownership. as so home ownership. Okay. So are there any like grant programs in the pipeline for that? Yeah, you know, okay, so there are a lot of different programs that exist even today before this one came up. Section 8 got it. Section 8 got it. Two or three year program. If you own Section 8, or well, you know someone on Section 8, they can get on there and that program and get their own grant. Okay. You know, so they can get on there and get their own grant. Okay. You know, so they can get on there and get their own grant. And they'll, they'll train them for three years on how to care for a house. How to uh, they'll help you understand how the mortgage system works and how the payments and escrow accounts and stuff like that. So there are a number of different programs that are out there for that already. 
And 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 that's okay. That's through hug. That's through um, that's through hug. And also, Ida. Ida. Ida has a lot of programs that they're already. That's what they do is housing. Because I'll be honest, I own property in the community I bought last year, and I can tell you when I was looking, it did not seem like many members from the community were in the groups, the massive groups. Because they probably didn't know about it. It's a lot of money that flows through our communities. We don't know nothing about it. But I'm not going to sit here and blame. See, I'm going to blame the state for it. I'm going to blame y'all for it too. Because you talk to each other and complain to each other about everything, but you don't talk to your elected officials. Many of you listen to WVON and all those other stations. They say the elected officials ain't nothing, ain't doing nothing, and blah, blah. that ain't even true. We can sit here and tell you that 30% of the crap they talk about is accurate, the rest of it is not. Okay? So we just need people to come out to meetings like this. If there's some organizations in your community that's having a <coughs> town hall meeting or something, get up off your butt and go. Bring some of your neighbors with you. Bring some of the young people out here. The young people feel as though there aren't enough programs for them or whatever. They need to come out and, and speak up. Because we are pretty occupied, y'all. I mean, me, I only have two staff in my office. I have one, and I got two in Chicago. The other, their budgets are bigger than ours. They got more staff, and we still overwhelmed. So don't expect for us, we may know a lot, but with us running around, and I mean, I mean, like, I have so much to do that when I get in my car and drive down to Springfield, I got that agenda down there to deal with, you know, and I'm trying to balance everything <coughs> up here, and it's just a lot. So we need y'all to help us out. Yes. Okay. I I um, want to ask, what is the income level that you all speak about when you say affordable housing? Because what is the amount of money that the family has to have? Available to find them eligible for affordable housing because if you have certain money criteria, no one is speaking about the money, uh, how much money you have to have in order to be eligible for affordable, an affordable house. Because it takes forever through CHA to get on the list. Nobody needs to be on the list for five or ten years to make you an apartment. They take too long if you do have Section 8 to process your moving paper. It costs the tenants a lot of money when you take it 30 to 60 days to process paperwork. That shouldn't take that long. So they put a whole lot of things out here. But then they make people go to hell to be able to assess it. Yeah. So it's not helping the poor people, it's making rich people richer. Right. And so we need to, you know, okay. stop this kind of stuff. Good point. I've been here to hear me for years. I have a sister that works for CHA. As a matter of fact, she's the, the oldest tenured employee in CHA with 49 years. And she and I talk about it all the time. They do have a shortage of staff, but that's no excuse because they have, their budgets are big enough to hire enough people. But the problem is, it's like this in every major city like Chicago. That's why a lot of people, half of Springfield now and half of Decatur are from Chicago. So they go down there and they can get on Section 8 in 30 days. <laughs> then they have to stay down there, I think, for a year. Yeah. And they need to stay down there because they like it. It's a great place to, 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 to raise your children and a, to raise a family. Or some of them come up here, come back up here with their sex on their yeah. Okay. And so that is a major problem um, um, in major cities. But I, once you get outside, once you get outside of the city of Chicago, the county, the county housing authority, they're the ones that you go and apply when you get sex abuse like that. Just like that, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. But that's a problem that has to 
continue to work on that, that CHA uh, waiting list thing is, is just ridiculous. That's what it is. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, um, uh, I'm about self-sufficiency and empowerment. Maybe how do you act? How do you access the resources for economic development uh, in, in the type of program that's out there? And I think you mentioned about grants as opposed to loans. But most of the time, we have to the bank. And we know the CRA and all the other probably run to the other question. What do you do? Uh, I'm a local chairman. I work for the Transit Committee, the Railroad. Um, local chairman. Uh, uh, I'm charged about 160 union employees. And is that, is that the no, about TCU. And uh, second question is, uh, how does a person volunteer to work with your, with your, with your office to, because uh, uh, I think maybe you, you were short staff, you don't have to be in the office, so I, I, was, I got you to that day. No. Oh, you get a card? I got a card. Oh, okay. Good. I don't even like to volunteer. But now, um, so when you say economic development, give me an example of what you're speaking of somehow, which direction is For well, instance, we might have a startup, person who might have a startup, or a Okay. Okay. No, good. Okay, okay. Just stop there. So, under Biden's recovery, American Recovery Act, I've never seen so much money before that, that, are, that are flowing to the states and trickling down to the cities. So, and it's for a little bit of everything. And this time, they really thought about the people. You know, last time they had something like this under Barack's administration. Remember, they focused more on the banks, and they bailed out, and, and, and we didn't get nothing. We didn't get nothing down here. And then the banks and the, middle, the rich folks called the poor people, called call them greedy. And they the one that's greedy. They got all the money, you know? So this time they really thought about the people. And so I think that they put something in there for a little bit of everybody. There are startups for small businesses, money's in there. There are grants in there, not loans. There are grants. There are loans out there also. But always ask for a grant first. And that's why I told you to go to www.illinois.gov. There's money's in there for, for your mortgages. There's money's in there for your rent. There's money's in there, tons of money's in there for education. Okay? There's all kinds of money's in there. Even if you want to expand your business, if you want to uh, if you want to buy new equipment for your house, I mean for your uh, your business, you know, some, some businesses, small businesses are in a home in your house, you know, that's not good money. But y'all I'm telling you, if y'all don't strike and kick it and, and strike while the fire is hot, shame on you. You can't blame me, the alderman, <coughs> no elected official. There's all kinds of monies that's getting ready to flow. Okay, there's still some more monies getting ready to come. We were able to, I mean, like when I came into, uh, well, several years ago, about five years ago, the state of Illinois was like a billion dollars behind on paying our bills. And that includes the vendors who we have contracts with with the state of Illinois. We was a, a billion dollars behind on paying them after they had already delivered the service. So we were able, you can't use the federal dollars to pay for debt relief. So what we did was take our existing dollars that we had in the budget, shifted that over and paid those bills. We got, we got that billion dollar debt down to $200 million now. Because of that. And the Washington Park tip. Now there was a group of us, we fought the tip the first time we won, the second round we lost. And there finally I have identified a section in the community for tip funds. And it's but it's a small business improvement fund. And it's for King Drive. I'm sorry, it's for 55th Street. From state to king, I'm pretty certain. Right on. And uh, that's something that can help us reimagine Washington Park. Uh, the third piece is Chicago Works Community Challenge. Now, one of the things that we in Washington Park definitely don't have, and that's a library. 
And I thought we was going to get one, but guess what? The Obama Center got one. And I said, ooh. But because of the Chicago Works Community Challenge, we can see about getting us a library with that. Right, Alderman? <laughs> so, uh, so hopefully, and that community challenge, it, uh, from the information I've gathered, it says you can, it's the rehabilitation of various lots, and we have more lots than probably any community we know on the south side. We might have a little competition on the west. But um, if, if it works on schools, it, on public institutions, all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Com Chicago Works Community Challenge. So with that, to give us a little tease, we're going to let our, and most of us, there's a few that's in the third ward in here, yes. but most of us are in the 20th ward in here. And we got the 20th order on. All right. Now. Okay. I'm going to apologize for not starting with all of them, Jeanette Taylor. Um, I was elected in 2019. Um, this is my first round of city council. I came from community organizing, and so I lived in the third ward until they built here at Washington Cultural Center. The property taxes went up, and I could no longer afford to live in the community. And so I wound up moving to Woodlawn. Um, I went on a 34-day hunger strike to save Diet High School. Um, I was on the Mama Center School Council for 22 years, and so I'm not new to the community. I've been doing this my entire life. Um, I was a 19-year-old mother, and my mother was a 30-year clerk at Mama School, and when I had babies, she was like, you gotta get on the PTA and local school council, and I didn't want to, because I'm like, them a bunch of good people, and all they do is argue and fight all the time, and I didn't want to know part of it. But I had no choice, because I had babies at this time, and that's what was required of me. And so I've, I've been a part of the, the fight not to get the Olympics. Um, the Olympics, if we look at what happened in other Olympic villages, once they leave, they leave the communities in disarray and really poor. And so one of the community groups that I wind up joining was Kimball Oakland Community Organization. And um, in joining that organization, I was a parent organizer for five years, and then for the last 10 years, I was the education organizer. So, I, brother, I can talk to you about education because I've been there. Um, and so I'm going to do two things. The office address is 5707 South River. 5707 South River. We're there from 10 to 3, Tuesday and Wednesday. We're there Thursday from 2 to 7.30. On Thursdays, I have constituent day. That means you can come and meet with me without an appointment. Now, I won't be there next weekend, next Thursday, because I need some time off. I have not taken really any time off during the pandemic because I need to be here to make sure that you all get what you need. Um, we have 20 senior builders in the 20th ward, so trying to get folks hand sanitizers and masks and making sure people eat has kind of been um, <coughs> on my list. Um, my cell number is 312-961-8063. Now I got two rules. The morning is after 10, and after 9 o'clock, unless you're dead on flight, please give me some rest. But that's my personal cell, I do answer. The office number is 773-966-5336. Could you give those numbers again? Sure, so my cell is 312-961-8063. 8063. I got a new statement. What was the last one? 8063. 8063. <laughs> the office number is 773-966-5336. And so I brought up the history of me moving to Woodlawn because once I moved to Woodlawn, they started talking about the OPC was going to be built in Jackson Park. And we know in communities of color, anytime large developments are built, the first people to be displaced are low income and working families. And that was me all day long. My mother was a clerk and I was a community organization. And Woodlawn was the only community we could afford to live in. And in a city where I pay taxes, that's one of the richest cities in the country, that's a sad existence. And you heard the senator talk about all the money that they put in these programs. They just never really make it to our community. And so, Woodlawn got a CBA, which was a community benefits agreement around housing. 
when we were fighting for that CDA, I wanted Washington Park to be included. But what happens is there are a bunch of different groups in Washington Park that did not work together. And this is what I'm saying to you is not a conversation that I have had with Ms. Butler and some other people from the community groups. If we do not work together, we will not live in Washington Park. And I want y'all to know, they want to move in our community. And we need to not make any mistake about that. This is our community. We've been here through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And while I'm sitting in office, we're going to stay. Whoever wants to come, I'm not with. People can't move in our community. You just can't displace us. And so my first fight with city council was because when I knocked doors, one of the conversations I had with people was about taking our tip dollars to help homeowners and people who own buildings and help renters. The city of Chicago took that from me. I just want to let y'all know, invest in Southwest is y'all tip dollars. It's y'all money, isn't it? It's our money. You go to the store, young person, you go to the store and buy them chips, that's the money they use to invest Southwest. And so I've been fighting with the city to get control of that money because I believe if we protect the people who are already here, we won't be overdeveloped out of our community. I do not control all the development that happens in the community. The only time that people come to me is if they want a zoning change or TIF dollars. Only time. Any, anything other than that, they deal directly with the Department of Planning, and it's on the city website of the Department of Housing. I play no role. But make no mistake, if you call me about a bad construction site or a bad landlord, that's what I do. Anybody who knows me and knows my history know I believe in standing up and fighting for the people that I'm paid to represent. I clearly understand who pays my check, and so those are the people I protect. Um, as some of you might know, I didn't have a very good thick week this week. Uh, <laughs> When it comes to housing, 
Woodlawn got a housing ordinance that I honestly did not agree with. It was not enough money in the renewal of Woodlawn, which talks about having people buy property who already live in the wood. There was not enough money to help out existing um, properties that need to be fixed so it can be affordable housing. I signed on to it because the community groups asked me to. But for me, I wouldn't have never signed on. <coughs> Chicago is not broke. We spent $20,000 on that shiny thing downtown, and I don't know what they do with it. So we could afford to, I don't know what it do. I, I, I've never been to it, and when I see it, I'm like, I, I, I missed the purpose of it, maybe. I don't know, waste of money to me. But we could have used that in our communities. The first thing that I asked for when I got into office was a property tax freeze for Washington Park and for Woodlawn. I was shot down. People, what I need you all to understand that where the United Center is, the United Center pays for the property taxes around the United Center. So whatever the property taxes was when they got there, whatever the increase, increase is, the United Center pays. The difference between the United Center and the OPC is a nonprofit, or at least that's what they tell me. <coughs> that got thrown out the window. My next fight is to get a trust, a trust that is community controlled. Institutions that want to move in our community need to be able to pay. Mm -hmm. Ain't no him saying to us about that. I'm going to tell y'all something. They always talk about the poor neighborhood, but where are these beauty shops and gas stations and quarter chips and stoves at? They right here. You see, they didn't go out of business during the pandemic? Because we spend our money. Please stop stop letting this whitewashed um, country fool us about who we are. We have a trillion dollars spent in industry. We spent our money. We ain't saving it. And I'm in that boat as well. All my savings count. I'm like, what you doing lately? Because I don't say it. I'm not going to die. Because I'll be like, you know, our life, our life expectancy ain't that long. So I'm just going to spend my money. <laughs> but at the end of the day, I'm trying to make sure that we're protected. And so I'm going to ask y'all a couple of things. I need for you all to join forces. I don't care what part of Washington Park group you're a part of. I don't care which one you want. We need to work together. That is one of the reasons why Bookline was able to move. Now, I know there's always been this fight of renters against homeowners, and I'm so, so sick of it. I've been renting my apartment for 13 years. I pay $1,000 a month. I could afford a house if I wanted to. I'm not interested, and that's for various reasons, because I've seen the city, when they want your property, they can ticket you right out of it. The building that I live in, they tick them right out of that building, because they'll start complaining about the roof, the back porch, and little things, because they're petty like that. And we have people who are coming to say, I want to die your home. And you say no, they call 311 and have the inspector come out, and now you got to find. We need that trust like day before yesterday. That trust will be controlled by community members that change every two years. You will have to match what's in that trust. And the money in the trust will come from the businesses that are pumping up in our community. They ain't coming here for us. They ain't never going to be here. The first time I see a Starbucks, I'm not going to. You did want to come up. Notice there are no major food chains, really, other than McDonald's. And we know what McDonald's is. McDonald's don't even pay their workers to live the wage. And so when it comes to housing, y'all, I'm going to say this, because my favorite comedian said it, but it's true. Either we're going to hang together or we're going to hang together. They're going to push us right out of our communities if we don't work together. As far as education is concerned, you had over 2,500 young people that never got computers, and if you know anything about the internet in this community, it sucks. I had two white boxes, Infinity and at and I got rid of at and at and would not even wire our community. Now they're going to do it, of course, why? The OPC is coming. We're not going to inconvenience the people with money, but they can have with the black folks. And so at the end of the day, what we do together makes us stronger. That CARES Act money was wasted. <laughs> but that's because city council members gave away their control. Now, you know I did. I voted no. We need to be able to control that money. We're about to get $1.9 billion from the federal government. <clears throat> Even if you live in my ward and you got friends that live in other wards, tell them to tell their elected officials, officials do not give away your power. Don't do it. Our mayor had ultimate power of that money. 38% of that money went to police. Talking about they was doing nothing. They did. They not going to enter y'all doors. They told me to a well-being check. They ain't not going to mind either. And I'm going to let you finish it. And so <laughs> the money was wasted. There are parameters of what you can and cannot use the money on. 
Make sure you look it up on the city website. You can, they clearly give you the parameters. Be on those calls, go to those town halls, be listening out, because they are making decisions about you. I'm going to end with this. If you would asked me five years ago when I get a pop text, I'd be like, them ladies and people make $105,000, because that's our start off pay. So Burke been there since I was born, so you know what he made. We get $1,000 a year, get raises. I get free dinner and great health insurance thanks to the great taxpayers in this room. If y'all let us get away with gentrifying y'all communities and not standing for y'all, shame on y'all. Shame on y'all. If these people don't make themselves successful to you, go to their office. I do not play this big ass little use. Whoever comes to my office and wants services, gets services. I'm helping people all outside of my room just because I come from community organization. And I believe in organizing around the community. Obviously, your question in one second. I'll hear you first. <coughs> the last thing I'll say is when it comes to development, we have a community <coughs> development team, but ultimately the community gets to make the decision on how we spend ten dollars on those projects and what can come and go. People don't believe in the process because they believe in the fix is already in. Anybody knows me knows all I got is my work. I've been broke my whole life, so I don't got nothing. If you all decide y'all don't want a business or an institution in the community, it don't happen. But I need you all to get involved in that process. They have to door knock in a 50 mile radius and they have two community meetings. The community development team was created is, is people from around the whole 20th board, but they don't have a power to vote if it's not in their ward. There are things that I don't even get to vote on because it's not in a 0.5 mile radius. And so if I cut out the vote, what you think I'm about? Think about other people. I don't. We, you all need to be able to make those decisions. There have been a lot of $10 spent that you all had no clue, which is why the Washington Top Park tip ain't really got nothing in it. They spent it on several projects, and from what I know, they had no conversation with y'all. I'm not gonna do that. That's not what I do. I believe in us working together, and I, I tell people all the time, I'm a movement by myself, but I'm a force when we're together. And so I cannot do this with y'all. One of the things I said in my campaign when I knocked doors is you going to City Hall with me. So anything that you want to know with this city, you are more than welcome to ask me. I'm transparent with everything I do. Everything that I do is on a website. So our website is JeanetteBTaylor.org. You can see the development process. You can see the phone number. You can see anything you want to. But more importantly, call me. I can't be everywhere at every time. I just cannot. And the ward is huge. We have a, a base of Latinx folks that live in our community because I represent back of the yards. I represent New City, which is Motown. You know, they want to make something fancy. They give it a new name. Um, Greater Grand Cross. So I have some of the six wards. Um, I have some of Eaglewood. Eaglewood has five all of So you know how that's going. Not too well for Eaglewood <laughs> residents. I have half of Washington Park, and I have most of Woodlawn. You all need to be at the table to make those decisions. Shirley Tisdale said it better than anybody else. If they don't bring you a seat, get your own chair. Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to say, we not have a representative of young people in this community. I've been living in Washington Park for two years of my life. And it's, it's time for, like, like the senator was saying, young, young people often get left out. And we be silenced and told to stay in the child's place and, and don't have no work. <coughs> but I'm coming here because I, I got some ideas and plans. I so as a young lady, so in my office, so I guess I should change, explain, explain the positions in my office. So my chief of staff is John Fadaro, the young lady that's sitting next to me. Um, the economic development person is a young lady named Elizabeth Carter. Uh, um, John, that was John's whole position, but Elizabeth is a lawyer. She was a lawyer in Newark that worked on development, and she hated developers, which is why she left. Um, I have somebody named Jeremy Wade. He works on um, communication and policy. And so think about this, the policy that we pass at City Council a lot of times comes from the community. Come have a conversation with me about policy. I have access to Kennedy King and the University of Chicago. Those students help me with policy. Listen, I was a mother who graduated from high school. By the time I was 19, I had a bunch of kids. The only certificate I got of college I went to was Dawson Tech, and that's the dude's entitlement. I ain't all fancy dancy, I ain't got a bunch of degrees. But that don't mean that I ain't smart, and I ain't smart enough to organize with and around my community. The other person that you need to be in my office is a young lady named Lynn Young. Lynn is 20 years old. She's the director of youth development. And so July 17th, we'll have a youth, um, uh, a youth resource system. 
And that's because <coughs> literally there are 25 organizations in the community, and at least half of them do youth service. You didn't even know that, did you? Because we don't, we don't share resources. We don't, we don't talk about it. We, don't, we ain't knocking doors. So one of the things that I'm asking each Dallas Prevention Group, community organization, church, is to knock doors with me. Every last one of them come to my office for a letter of support. You're not getting nothing from me if you're not going to get up and go knock on the door. These young people I, ain't the problem. This generation, and I'm going to say this to you, I'm talking directly to you because you're in the room. This generation ain't lots of you been neglected. We've allowed this to happen to you. We got to own it. And for us to fix it, you're going to have to be at the table. So I'm not one of those. My kids are 31, 28, 27. I got an 18-year-old and I got a 17-year-old and they got plenty to say. And so I believe in young people. Everybody in my office, with the exception of my perception, is younger than me. Why? Because I'm not going to be like the black church. The black church, the pastor, been there 99 years. <coughs> then when he died, what happened? The church fall apart. Because he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't carry it on. And so. Another thing I need to say is that we, we in 2021, it's been a lot of information. Like, I'm talking about this knowledge wise that need to be brought to the table. It got to come a time where we got to stop sweeping stuff under the rug and, and things and that. And, but one thing that we do, we act out of this out of emotion and out of this thing called cognitive distance where we need to break, especially when we, what you just said, politics and religion. It has. I agree with you. It's taking over. We haven't had you in the space. We love making this vision for young people because we think we know. This ain't the 50s and 60s. These are some different type of kids. They ain't scared of your dogs, they ain't scared of your hoes. <laughs> they just not. They are not. They are different. And they are generation I love because they lit. That's their word, y'all. It's not matter. It's just their word. It's not matter. They on Snapchat. They on all of those things. We're going to have to learn to be on those things. One of the things I think the senator we are in, we're, we're talking about now, which hopefully will come to fruition in the next two to three years, is building a community center that will sit between Woodlawn and Washington Park. Because that's the biggest thing that's missing. Young people, everybody can't go to the park district. We got two, I got three park districts in my ward, and they're always over field. We need something that's free for young people to just go in and out. They got to sign their names. They just need a space to be in, along with seniors. And so we're in the works for building that. I would, I'm going to give you my number um, so that we can talk. But there, I got a young person that she worked on my campaign. She's 20 years old. She in college. I met her at a meeting at Hot Park when they was talking about knocking Hot Park down for the Obama suit. And she was at a meeting and she was getting attacked. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's how we gonna do the young people. You need to hear what they say. And because of them, Hot Park is not gonna be knocked down and they got like two million dollars in investments in the school. So I know the power of young people. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, uh, a little older than that, you can be in your office and you can walk in. What's your day? It's Thursday. It's Thursday. From 2 to 7.30. Yes, ma'am. Now, I'm going to be there next Thursday. I'm going to take that. Yeah, every, every Thursday, I'm there faithfully. I don't go anywhere. I'm there. Even sometimes during the week, if you come by and I'm there and I hear you, or you want to talk to me, I'll come out. I, I'm, I have yes, one more question. I know you work with all of them here soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that, uh, what's his name? Is all the thing? Is that still on about that? Okay. Yes, they are going to build oh. the Tiger Woods. <laughs> Whatever that is, and I have no control. Now the lake is not mad. I don't got nothing to do but go on in another person's board. Now I did take a tour of the park that they're talking about building on, and it seems like that land over there is dead. But I have no, I have nothing to do with it. I don't have no skin in the game with that. And I'll be honest with you all. In order to get the things I need to give in my community, I'm gonna have to do some compromise. Now I don't agree with that tight rules where his PGA. I don't like that because that's more. Trash, that's more crowd, that's more traffic. And you already talking about taking out corner out drive. But I, I can't go against my coworker, and I'm just gonna be honest now. Okay. If this was us building houses, even though our houses would be sinking over there, because that's what grass and water is, because it's the lake. I don't have a foot in it. I, 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 I just want to say one thing. I know a lot of people don't, because I've been to the meetings over there, and people talk about it. A lot of people don't understand that anything that is built, uh, anything that's around the PGA golf course, if they start looking on the internet, what what PGA golf courses look like, what the communities look like, you know, they will understand that South Shore will be gone if they don't sit up there and do something. Because the people that follow PGA are even in the ballpark with our money, even those folks of us that think we got money because we live in Jackson Heights. That's all I know. And I want us to remember about, think about this. 
the senator talked about subsidies. They have people who live downtown in high rise and they got subsidies. So we don't be ashamed to be taking these people grant money and getting their subsidy. Hell, I wish I could get a subsidy. I'm just going to be honest. The people downtown that live in those high rises, a lot of them have subsidies. But it's what you're saying. We don't talk about it. We don't, we don't have those conversations. We don't talk about it. Like I said, we just, when it's time to have a real world conversation, you know, we tend to get emotional. And I got this thing, like I said, called cognitive dissonance. And like, you need to understand it. I mean, that's, that's a big situation. That way, when we understand what that is, what it do to us, we can start tiptoeing and then spreading to push that progression through. Oh. I agree with you. I don't know who came up with that first. So I'm going to take you. I'm just ladies first. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, the question is, well, I'm glad to meet you, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, I moved to this community about a year ago. <clears throat> And now, uh, as an educator, I can definitely relate to what you're saying with the transition and the logistical problems. I just completed the most difficult year of teaching because we are mandated to teach in a hybrid fashion where you teach so online you and, and online. You had nothing to do, and that's another thing. The city council does not control Chicago Public School. It's its own institution and entity. Yeah. Even though there's a, 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 even though we have a committee on education, it don't do nothing. We've met twice since I've been in office. Go mm ahead. -hmm. Okay. And so, um, you, I think the other lady mentioned some, some type of proactive action of teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it needs to be more of a partnership with parents and teachers because the things I've witnessed online is uh, <laughs> egregious to say the least. Um, when it comes to this system, think about this. <laughs> I'm made to work 80 hours a week just to feed my kids. How could I be at home and work exactly. at the same time? You you don't exactly. give me a choice in this system. Like, I'm still fighting. I, when they did fight for 15, I wanted this to be 18. But Chicago is an expensive city. But people weren't there yet. There are a lot of people who still don't make $15 at these jobs. Yeah. And the city is not doing enough to make sure that they do. Yeah, I'm putting it that way. I don't do it too far. Um, but um, my point is that there was a lot of holes left in the, in the quality of education. Mm -hmm. So when I first moved to this community, the first thing that struck me, because uh, I moved from South Shore, where there was a whole lot of uh, proactive community-based groups, and I, but here I, I wasn't aware of anything, and I did try to call the office, but I'm glad I got more direct now. Um, my, my first thing that hit me was a plethora of empty lots and the, and the uh, egregious amount of trash. <laughs> So what I did, the grassroots level, was just started a cleanup, you know, uh, group, and I offered, you know, free art classes, and reading classes to my uh, neighbors' kids. But what I'm very interested in is getting connected to groups that are doing similar things and resources, because to really spread the cleanup initiative that I have in mind, we need uh, resources like these to pick up the trash and you know bodies. I also have a three-tier plan to uh, that I think would help um, galvanize the youth and connect them with older people with skills, so they can put these skills together and train you to um, you know mend the fences and paint these buildings and clean up these lots and and we get them all They sell them to the highest bidder. And if you can afford a dollar lot and those dollar lot programs that's next to your house, please man. Because what people did five years ago was all the lots sat on for five years, now they sat on for $75,000. So if you can afford to, please do it. I don't think people understand the families, everybody know what a Home Depot is on 87th Street. Yeah. It's five black families that own that because they own the land for a dollar. And now they rent it to Home Depot. See, they don't tell us about stuff like that. We They, we, they keep us fighting with each other and trying to figure out the next thing. Yeah. And so, when it comes to trash, I need people to understand that's an everybody problem. That ain't just an all on the table problem. And sometimes what behooves me is, you see the trash, pick it up. Yeah. I do community cleanups in the ward every year. I haven't did one in Washington Park yet. We did one in Grady Grand Cross. It been nasty. Don't don't act like this is something new. It's just now because we've had all this time at home, it's no. But we need everybody to take, to take the initiative. I bought garbage cans from 63rd Estate all the way to 63rd in college. How many you see that? They stole. I just hope they put trash in them. <laughs> That's all I got to say. We, we all have to work together and take the initiative. And what I hear from a bunch of our neighbors is, I ain't getting up no trash. They pay you to do it. Yeah, I'm crazy. They pay me for They pay me to bring my 
our community together and make sure that we work together. And so if all the women take to pick up trash, show the Jews. I pick up trash. My first chief slam, I had a bag, a lavish bag and a level of and a stick. And she used to be mad as heck because I was out like, let's just get this trash up. And so that's something we got to take. There are some things in our community we don't have to fix. See, what I love about Senator Hunter is she talked about one of the biggest things. If they give us the money and man they business, we will be just fine. We know what community is. We got to reinvent the wheel. We got to start taking care of each other. That's what it is. I stood on the shoulders of Senator Hunter to get here. I knew her, and she's absolutely right about me if I knew that. <laughs> Hey, 
how you doing this all on the table. I don't want to call the business department on you, but I'm getting a complaint about your daughter. If you give the daughter a chance, but my boy superintendent gonna come back every day and give you a ticket. Have a great day. That's the end of it. You have the conversation with people. So you have my contact information, there's no reason. I'm gonna go with this. Okay. I'll come back to you, let me go to the young lady you have yesterday. You I think that everybody's concerned right now, but my biggest concern is the bonds that they blow off. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, so fireworks are illegally to sell yeah. in the city of Chicago. They ain't illegal to use. That's the problem. See, we, we, they, we got the wrong legislation. That's the problem. Like, you can't sell them. They, they go to Indiana to sell them, but they are not illegal to use. And so when people are, I, I am complaining about it because it's a noise thing. I definitely yeah. try it. What's the thing to say they can't do them at all? And honestly, because the city lays a lot of money on doing those firework shows, and they go to neighbor here. What about the fireworks? Like fire. What about the nuisance ordinance? Right. right, I'm talking about the, the dynamite that they sent off. I mean, yes. it's <laughs> that, it's that, it's that, it's that. Yeah. My dog, the baby. No, the I mean, the the yeah. So, what, are you close to no fault, somebody? I'm a 50 person walker. So, one of so so you all know that before I got into office, Willie Cochran sold a lot of land to Northwood Southern. They are now cultivating that land. So, I think that's what you might be hearing with the boom. Because they're doing it. No, let me tell you, the work is going from 63rd all the way to 55th. If you drive over that way past, past Princeton, you will see all of this vacant land. That that is also to Norfolk Southern, and, and they are currently working on it. Because my family <coughs> had a lot of property over here and sold a lot of that property to that railroad company. But if they're setting up those bonds at night like they're doing, I mean, it's back to back to back. Oh, can, you, can, can, can you do me a favor and record it for me? I want to record on your cell phone. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, 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 oh,